In math, when you don't understand something, the best thing to do is to break it down into small enough pieces that you do understand the pieces and then put it together slowly. When I was studying calculus on manifolds, even though I had already done vector calculus, I found it very hard to follow because it was written in a different style, a different notation, and getting used to that took a while. In the process of doing that, I devised some bits of notation and I picked out some things that were helpful for me to focus on closely. The definition of a derivative is given here. You're taking the regular de limit definition of a derivative and changing it to accommodate vectors, vectors in and vectors out. That's why we have these absolute value bars. But it can be hard to keep track of everything. So f is a function from rn to rm. And we're plugging into f things like a and a plus h. So a and a plus h must be elements of rn because they're inputs. Likewise, f of a plus h and f of a must be elements of rm because they're outputs. We're adding these things together. We're adding vectors, so this had better have the same dimensions. So lambda of h must also be an element of rm. Because some of the notation got a little tricky, I decided that I needed even more clarity. So I decided to take this expression and make it more explicit. What I write instead of that is I say f maps a, which is an element of rn, to f of a, which is an element of rm. When things are being confusingly abstract, make them as concrete as you possibly can. Now we know that lambda of h is rm, and we know that h is an element of rn, so lambda functions the same way as f does in terms of its domain and range. Lambda takes an h, which is an element of rn, and gives lambda of h, which is an element of rm. An important difference between them is that f is an arbitrary function and lambda is a linear transformation. Specifically, lambda is df of a, and lambda, we know, maps an element of rn to an element of rm. So df of a maps x, which is an element of rn, to df of a of x, element of rm. That's why I made this expanded notation, because this expression here is linear as a function of x, it is not linear as a function of a. That was a source of a lot of confusion for me. Now this df of a is the abstract object. If you write an actual matrix, Spivak writes the matrix as f prime of a. So this is essentially the grid of partial derivatives that one would learn in a regular vector calculus class. Now, if you've been struggling with this specific bit of Spivak, then hopefully this clears things up for you. But more generally, what I'm pointing out is that when you are tackling some math that is hard for you, I don't care how simple it is or how advanced it is, if it's hard for you, break it down into smaller pieces until you do understand it. I was never going to understand this just by staring at it. I had to break it down into smaller and smaller pieces. Now, some people would say, oh, well, you should have just been able to see that. Well, I'm not them. You start from where you are, you learn however works for you. So don't be afraid to invent notation, okay? Thanks for watching.